What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. We are back for the Mexican Grand Prix episode number 17 for season one of this my team journey. I think there's only four races to go including this one so let's see if we can finish on a high. Uh, ultimately it's going to be quite difficult to move forward in the championship especially constructors but we want to finish on a high and build momentum for season two. Our running costs are significantly less than the income we're pulling in. I suggest we start looking for opportunities to spend that profit margin. We have a problem regarding our driver. How do you want to handle this? I don't think this is a problem at all. This is a massive opportunity. We've been invited to, or Dan Tictum has been invited to a charity event. If he goes, he'll get 2,000 driver acclaim. If we decline, he'll get a massive boost of focus. We're going to go for the driver acclaim because that's going to help the team massively. Thanks for dealing with that. The department's appreciate it. So there we go. Um, that could almost send us over to level 11 in terms of team acclaim, um, which is ultimately the most important thing for us now. We've got all the points that we need to out of this season. I think we're going to finish in eighth in the constructors. Uh, we need to build the reputation of the team. We need to get towards level 15. That's when we can unlock the next uh, sponsor and get more, you know, money in, uh, basically to upgrade the facilities because we're getting to the point now where we can't really do too much more in terms of upgrades before we need to upgrade the facilities. So, um, yeah, we're, we're running out of upgrades. However, uh, we're getting towards the end of the season and when we get that end of season bonus, that is going to unlock so many things for us. So, yeah, just gotta. I've really got to plan out what I'm gonna do uh, for a whole multitude of things. But I think at this stage, I'm gonna stop investing in facilities for the rest of the season now, and um, I'm gonna have to save up for the second driver fund because, yeah, it's annoying. But you can't you can't buy your second driver after the season ends, and you get your budget. You have to factor that into this year's budget, which makes no sense. Anyway, we did a front downforce upgrade. Um, That'll go on in time for the next race, hopefully. Uh, upgrades coming in for this race are weight reduction, tire wear. We did have an MGUH failure for the upgrade for durability. Typical. Uh, but that's fine because uh, that was only a bonus upgrade. I chucked a, a couple hundred resource points at. So that's absolutely fine. Um, so front downforce, drag reduction are in the works. And uh, we... Creep ever closer to the likes of Alpha Tauri. We did actually overtake Alpha Romeo in the break uh, between last race and this, but we've now discovered that Alpha Romeo brought upgrades of their own and they stay ahead of us uh, in the performance index for the time being. So we're getting more competitive. Um, we're getting towards that uh, lower midfield marker. We're no longer. Are we still back markers? Yeah, we're kind of still back markers, but we're, we're getting closer. We're being more competitive. And uh, next season, you know, we want to be solidly in the midfield. Um, hopefully, maybe slightly better. Who knows? Um, this is the most realistic progression I think we've had so far in an F1 career mode. Um, I think in previous games, we would have already been top of the midfield or something ridiculous like that. But it's nice to see how... how realistic it's been and uh, I'm sure that you guys actually really appreciated that on, on my career mode as opposed to other people who seem to be progressing maybe too fast I'm not sure how they're doing that anyway um, resource points come in uh, we basically maxed out everything from Friday practice so uh, we get all the discount upgrades for the future and uh, yeah life's looking good uh, pace is all right but uh, Dan Tictum is really getting the most out of the car so far. Let's move on to Quali. Qualifying time then for the Mexican Grand Prix. I think a dream result would be if we could get both cars into the next session. Uh, in Marduk Motorsports history, we can only get one driver out of Q1. Last time out, it was Dan Tictum. Uh, but for the last few races prior to that, it's been me. So if we could get both cars into Q2, that would be incredible. Currently P7, 
and P9 at the time being. But, you know, 90% of the grid hasn't set a time yet. Ignore that. Um, we're, we're currently uh, two tenths up on our previous best. This is uh, my second lap on the same set of tyres. Seeing, seeing if I can better the time. Looks like I'm losing a bit of time through sector three. Um, very easy to lose time at low speed corners. If you don't get the rotation right or you get a little bit of understeer or lock up. So many different factors can go wrong at low speed. Um, the time just evaporates very quickly. So yeah, Dan currently in safety at this stage, P16. And a solid five tenths ahead of me at this stage. So I need to up the ante here. Because if I don't, I'm looking at potentially maybe a P20. Because Sonoda is behind me. And we know that he's going to improve in that Alpha Tauri. Or you think he's going to improve in the Alpha Tauri. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. A tenth up on our final lap here in Q1. It doesn't look like it's going to be good enough. We do, we did lose a lot of time in Sector 3 last time. So hopefully we can make it up this time around. Still a little bit understeery in this car. We definitely need to improve the balance of this thing. And also get a little bit more front downforce on it. Three tenths up as we approach the final uh, straight. And that is not good enough to beat our teammate. Not good enough to get out of Q1. We already know that. It's P21. P21. For the Mexican Grand Prix. We haven't qualified this badly in a long time. But. The silver lining is. The gap to pole position is only 1.8 seconds. So the field as a whole is a lot closer at this round of the championship. We're just on the wrong end of that, unfortunately. So everyone is improving in uh, very subtle areas, but it seems to be making a big difference on the circuit. So yeah, although we're in P21, we are more competitive in the race usually. So um, I've got high hopes for the Grand Prix. We know we'll move forward. Yeah, tough to take that one. Tough luck there. It's not quite where we'd want to be on the grid, but chin up, it's not the end of the world. Here we go then. It's time to race in Mexico City, a place which gave Honda their first ever victory back in 1965. American Richie Ginther won from third on the grid. And what are the Honda powered cars this year? Well, Red Bull have been going strong here in recent seasons, so can they keep that record going today? At 2,285 meters above sea level, the thin air of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez poses a unique challenge, not just to a driver's skill, but to the efficiency of their engines as well. 17 corners make up a lap of this 2.6 mile circuit, and you can expect incredible speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour, and overtaking two into the hard braking zones of turns one and turn four. Uh, hi guys. Just filling in here for Crofty and the other guy. Because it seems like they've gone on break halfway through this uh, race announcement. That's fine. I'll do all the commentating anyway. Um... What are we looking at? That's me. Hello. My my helmet mod isn't working for some reason. Pierre Gasly chilling as he's ready to get on the grid. Code Masters. There are glitches popping up left, right, and center. I think that's going to do it for Ben's mid-race announcement. Back to the other guys. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Lando Norris, and Ricardo, Gasly, Vettel, Fernando Alonso, and Lance Stroll, Verstappen, they've taken a grid penalty, Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Tictum. Sainz, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Russell, Nikita Mazepin, and Benjamin. Ocon, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, they've taken a grid penalty. And Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Okay, so P18 on the grid for today's race. Uh, grid penalties, again, wreaking havoc on the grid, which is exactly what we want to see. I think our teammate is starting P14. Uh, so, yeah, looking like a positive start for Mardik Motorsport 
Um, you know, it's it's one thing me starting up the grid, but if my teammate is up there too, then that's his uh, ultimately the golden situation because he's so much closer to points. Kimi Raikkonen on the fringes there in P11. So uh, yeah, again, much like the last Grand Prix, I think there could be some big points on offer. Um, we're going to go for the alternative strategy. Start on the mediums, uh, finish on the soft. Based on previous year's games, the soft is ridiculously OP around here, so I want to finish the race strongly on that and try and cling on to as many cars as I can on the slower tire. So here we go, five red lights, and we are underway for the Mexican Grand Prix. Not a great start. I wasn't expecting one anyway on the harder compound of tire. Ocon and Sonoda get past us. Uh, Schumacher are looking at having to go at me down into turn one as well. Um, the AI... Yeah, they're a little bit slow on the first lap, as you'd expect. So the last few races, we've had some incidents on lap one, which has seen a lot of uh, front wing damage. Let's hope for our sake the same is the case today as we get around the outside of Nikita Mazman there on the run into the middle sector. Now, we might be able to get Ocon, Russell, Sonoda, Raikkonen. Maybe not Raikkonen. That would have been a bit of a, a tall order, but someone is going slowly up the order once again. There are incidents on the first lap. Simulation damage really catching out the AI in the midfield. And uh, yeah, we're going to be the ones to capitalize on that. It's just uh, a case of waiting now and seeing who it is that's going slowly. Slowly, it looks like Lando has got a lot of understeer. As has Valtteri Bottas just up the road. They're both understeering off the circuit. Here comes the Ferrari and the Mercedes. Round the outside goes Lewis Hamilton. Up the inside goes Charles Leclerc. And there is the confirmed damage for Lando. Unfortunately, no replay of what instigated all that. But uh, I'll do the replay stuff for next episode. You'll have to remind me. But uh, there we go. Leclerc gets past Lando. And uh, yeah, it looks like it is going to be a big fat F for Valtteri Bottas once again. Sergio Perez, by the way, is leading the Mexican Grand Prix by over five seconds on the first lap. So it's... Uh, Pretty ridiculous. The, the hometown hero is on target to get some big points and glory at his home Grand Prix. I hope for his sake he can actually get it. Three wide for myself and my teammate in separate battles. Uh, Sides getting the measure on Tictum. And uh, it's Giovinazzi who's the big loser out of that three wide battle. We get past Sonoda and uh, whoever the hell we were battling early. Maybe Raikkonen. And we're into P11. So... Been a great start so far. A few people boxing early for uh, new tyres, new wings. Bit of a moment there for us as Tictum is now overtaking Carlos Sainz for P9. Go Tictum, he's absolutely flying in this race. They're still side by side now, trying to sort out this squabble. I think the Ferrari might get the position here. He'll have the inside for the final left-hander. And uh, yeah, Tictum didn't get a great run. I'm going to sit in behind. Here comes uh, Giovinazzi around the outside of both of us. Massive lock up into the stadium section. Uh, Tictum blocks him off. And thankfully, he still remains in the points. So for this first stint, guys, my, my role here is going to be a bit of a, a rear gunner for Dan Tictum. He's on the OP soft compound tires. So there's no point in me overtaking him because he'd only re-overtake me anyway. I'm going to do the best job I can to to fend off the faster cars from behind and maybe go for a team play that's going to get one of us to the points in this Mexican Grand Prix. I am willing to make that sacrifice for Tictum to finally get some momentum for him to really step up as a number two driver. If he can get some points, that would be massive for his confidence and as such, I think he'd be absolutely worldly in uh, the races to come, maybe in season two as well. But um, yeah, if you, if you spotted that, MFD notification. We have a, a DRS failure. Unfortunately, the, the, the rear wing is stuck closed at this point. Uh, not like it matters because we lost touch. Oh my goodness! There goes Sonoda in the barrier. He's lost his front right tire and he is out of the Mexican Grand Prix. Completely caught me by surprise there. And uh, yeah, the safety car is going to be deployed for that one for sure. My goodness. Uh, more AI mistakes in the race. Unforced error there for the rookie of Yuki Tsunoda. And uh, yeah, that's that's just going to help us uh, in our quest to get some points here for Marduk Motorsport. Because the, uh, the Alpha Tauri is a little bit faster than us. The safety car, I won't lie, has kind of come in a bad time for us medium compound runners. 
But I'm going to make a pit stop anyway and put on another set of medium tires. This will only make the one stop that much easier to pull off uh, for the rest of this race. So on to another set of mediums. Go, go, go. We're going to save the softs for later on. There might even be another safety car later. So um, hopefully this is the right decision. I, I don't know for sure if I've made the right choice here. But I hope that in strategy land, this all works out for us quite well towards the end of the Grand Prix. Sergio Perez absolutely raging, by the way. He lost that five-second lead he had. And uh, now he's got to contest with some fast boys behind him as we get ready to go back under green flag running. The tires are going to be pretty co cold on this restart. But uh, essentially what we're waiting for is for the softs to die off for those ahead of us. A lot of people who did pit boxed again for another set of softs, so we'll see them in very swiftly for another pit stop. We only have to make one more pit stop to get to the end of the Grand Prix, uh, whereas some of us might be doing a two-stopper from here. So essentially a three-stop. Anyway, we're back underway for green flag running. You can see Sebastian Vettel really having a go at us down into turn one. He does get the move done, though, but we have the inside for the next left-hander. Seb yields... And we hold P19 for the time being. Losing a lot of touch with George Russell. But in time, our tyres will phase in nicely and we'll catch up again. Speaking of catching up, it looks like my teammate is on the move once again. Gets up the inside of Nikita Mazepin into the stadium section. And displaces him down to P16. Though it might be P17 as Ocon is looking to get in the mix as well. Russell caught up on the back of Ocon. We go around his outside. And we have the inside for the next right-hander. We get the position. 18th place for us. It was only like five seconds ago I was speaking about hopefully catching up to, to Russell in the long-term future. But uh, next lap, it has happened. And Mazepin gets caught up on Ocon. Free position for us. 17th for us now. And we're looking to catch up to Ocon. But Vettel has other plans. He's now cutting his way through the grid on the soft compound tires. There's not much we can do to fight against him. We let him go and uh, he displaces us back down to 18th place. There's a tasty old battle emerging up the road and here's the replay of said battle. This is Mick Schumacher and Lando Norris making contact. Lando has lost his front wing for the second time in this race and now look at the big ass train we've got going here. You can see Vettel, uh, Ocon, Tictum, Schumacher all involved in this. It's literally four wide into here. Into the corner, it's still four wide. We go around the outside of Vettel. Norris has got no front wing. Schumacher dive bombs. We make contact with Lando and we've lost our front wing. We've lost our front wing in this race. And now we make contact with Ocon and there goes the whole wing. Safety car has been deployed. What has gone on here? What has gone I think I just caught got caught out by Lando's slow apex speed and we ran into him. My teammates got damage. Lando's got damage. Ocon might have damage. He did run over that wing. But uh, yeah, right at the apex side. Nowhere to go. There was that second bit of contact with Ocon. That was a bit unnecessary. And we've been given a five second uh, stop go penalty for contact with Ocon. Technically under safety car. So um, yep. This race has definitely gone down the toilet. Not, not the kind of, uh, not the kind of afternoon we wanted here at Marduk Motorsport. Uh, in the end, making that early stop under the first safety car was not the right decision. Tictum has a five-second stop go, and a front wing change. So this is a very, very painful pit stop for us here. Here's the stop go. Oh, now here's the stop go. Jeez. Now comes the front wing change and the tyres. This is the world's longest pit stop, I reckon. Exit, 46 exit seconds. Uh, well, 16.1 and it's going to be close to a minute spent in the pit lane. We nearly went to lap down, by the way. So, uh, yeah, we are in a lot of trouble in this race. Hopefully the safety car will stay out long enough for us to catch up. We switched on to another set of mediums. Unfortunately, the other set of mediums we had was the mediums that we started the race on, which we only had on the car a few laps ago. So we're going to come into the pit lane at the end of this lap, Confirm and we're going to change on the soft compound tires because I didn't realize... Oh, the safety car's coming in anyway. So, uh, yeah, we're stuck on the old tires. 
maybe this will be okay. We're, we're essentially in the same position we were five or six laps ago. Um, but yeah, everyone else has newer tyres essentially. And we have no track position. So away we go for green flag running. Tyres are still pretty warm. Uh, despite all that, but uh, we just lost touch with uh, those immediately in front of us. Everyone is running softs in this race. No one wants to use the mediums, essentially. Uh, that will be coming later. So once we bolt on the softs and everyone has mediums, we're going to be well and truly in the money here. Here's Schumacher going side by side with Dan Tichter. Valtteri Bottas is running outside the points with the back markers. He is having a torrid race. Round the outside of Mazepin we go. Raikkonen stopped on uh, the start of this lap. Uh, Tickton mounting the curve, trying to get ahead of Norris, losing the back end. Goes back up the inside of Schumacher. This is just a mental race. Contact with Mazepin. He might have front wing damage because of that. And uh, yeah, here we go. Take two into the stadium section. It's two or three wide down here. We get up the inside of Schumacher. Nearly make contact with our teammates as we do uh, kind of graze along the side of Schumacher. He was not wanting to let that one go. And uh, Haas are now demoted to the back, essentially. Uh, Fernando Alonso is in. He's got a change in front wing. So more contact, more crashes continue in this race. And uh, we're only at the halfway point now. We are only halfway through this race. And we have seen, what, nearly half the field come in for an unscheduled pit stop for a front wing change. There's uh, Tictum going around the outside of Gasly. We decided not to overtake Tictum to give him the space to overtake. And now he's made that move stick and we follow him through. So Marduk Motorsport working together in tandem to, to move up the grid. P13 and 14 for us respectively. As uh, more people are just making stops. So... Yeah, it's, uh, this is a weird race. Now, this is Bottas having a front wing change. Maybe Lando, Lando Norris is having a front wing change yeah. again. So, um, this race has endless possibilities. And that's our race leader, Sergio Perez. He, uh, he spun in the, uh, the SS section. And now he's going to get overtaken by my teammate. This is a mental Grand Prix. And we're only just past the halfway point. I tell you what, Marty Motorsport might be on for a 1-2. If the AI keep crap in the bed like this, we're now in the points. P7 and 8 for us, respectively, uh, with a pit stop yet to go in this race. I think the race leaders who have just come in have made their final stop in this race. And Tictum is now boxing as well for a set of medium compound tyres. That's going to see him out to the end of the Grand Prix. So um, Tictum's... Tictum's, uh, I don't know, uh, chances in this race might go down a little bit with those mediums. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, though. There goes Raikkonen uh, with fresher tyres and us uh, steaming up into P3. Stroll gets up the inside as well. But we might be able to hold on to this relative to him, and it's P4 for the time being. Alfa Romeo in P2 and P3 right now. This is absolutely ridiculous. If this keeps up, they're on for some major points. And they might even overtake us in the Constructors uh, if they have a golden race up against us. So let's hope that's not the case. Out of the pit lane we go. And it's looking likely for a P17 position at this stage. However, we now have the good tyres on. We've been saving them all race. And we're going to have a blast for the final 11 laps in this Mexican Grand Prix. So then, first lap out of the pit lane. And... We've elected to save our ERS. We're going to charge it all up. We're going to get DRS off a of Russell on the star finish straight. And we're going to go for a faster slap. Hopefully, uh, given that we're on the soft compound tires. Out comes Raikkonen on the softs as well. I wasn't expecting many people to be on softs at the same time. We're going to go around the outside of Raikkonen here. He's got cold tires. He still goes for it anyway. But uh, yeah, he nearly got the position off of us. And it's P13 for us. For the time being, here comes Raikkonen with a switchback. This is not ideal for my fastest lap attempt. That's already two corners he stuffed me over through. And yeah, because of that, we didn't get fastest lap. I don't think we were going to get fastest lap anyway. We did improve by two seconds relative to our previous best fastest lap. We are making massive gains on Dan Tictum now. On the medium, cop out tires round the outside. And we just dance past him like he's not even moving in a corner. That is how effective the soft compound tyre is. Raikkonen 
Ah, uh, got past him as well, and Tictum is now five seconds back. I, I don't know what it is about the uh, the tire compounds here. Maybe the uh, the soft is too steps softer than the medium, if that makes sense. If this is like a C5 tire, maybe the mediums are like C3 or something. Or vice versa. I don't know what it... I don't know if C5 is the hard, or if C5 is the, the soft. You guys have to let me know. I, uh, I It's been a while since I've brushed up on that. We're, we're lazy these days. All we say is soft, medium, and hard. It's, uh, it's a lot easier than a few years ago in F1 when it was ultra soft, super soft... Soft, medium, hard. Was there a super hard as well? I think that was a super hard. Anyway, staying ahead of Raikkonen is super hard in this race. He now takes P12. We are catching up to Alonso and Giovinazzi inside the points. Yellow flag through the first sector. And that is for Carlos Sainz, who now retires from the Grand Prix. Uh, given that there's only two laps to go, there's not going to be any intervention from the FIA. So it's going to be green flag running for the rest of the Grand Prix. Our chances of getting points now, I think, have, have run their course as Raikkonen makes a spin through the middle sector. It's an unforced error. Maybe this is what happened to uh, Sergio Perez uh, from the lead of the Grand Prix earlier. He's uh, pressed the overtake, if you notice, on his steering wheel while riding a curb. Um, and the lateral G-force is going through there, being on the power as well has uh, unsettled the car to the point where he's now not in P13 anymore. And we have inherited that position once it... No, it's P12. Now it's P13. As Max Verstappen, where has he been in this race? What kind of strategy is he on? I don't know. It's been a weird Grand Prix. And uh, it gets even weirder. Daniel Ricciardo wins the Mexican Grand Prix. And uh, for the first time, he, like kind of acknowledged the, the pit crew there on uh, the right hand side which is lovely to see, maybe the recent update has changed a couple of things but uh, yeah, it's going to be P13 for us could have been so much more I reckon if we would have managed the race better, if we would have not crashed if we would have started on softs and gone to mediums through the middle stint so many different things we could have done differently in this race but at the end of the day, even P13 isn't a disaster we're still making gains as a team. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. So, yeah. P13. Dan Tictum got unlucky with his strategy as well. Honestly, either one of us could have got points. The thin air here in Mexico City makes this event a brutal one for these Formula One cars. But this team have done a fantastic job to make it to the chequered flag and take a well-earned victory. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. Okay, the uh, post-race celebrations have definitely been updated. Uh, nice to see something different for a change. Ricardo really getting into that celebration and I think Lewis giving him a, a little nod saying well done. So um, yeah, nice to see that uh, the game still gets supported after its launch. I mean, of course it does, but uh, actual new kind of features stuff gets thrown in, which is nice to see. Daniel Ricciardo wins the Mexican Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton in a hectic race, comes home in P2. Um, what a day for the championship. Uh, so many rivals of Lewis Hamilton falling by the wayside. Bottas having a stinker. I don't actually know where he ended up in the end. He might have actually been okay because everyone seemed to get that wrong. So many people stopped under under green flag running. Bottas got P7. Okay, so that's not great for the championship. Uh, Bottas is his nearest rival and he extends the lead to over 31 points. So unless Bottas can respond in the next two races, this championship is over as far as Lewis Hamilton is concerned. Max Verstappen way too far back. So it's looking like a Mercedes championship. McLaren have been in it in phases, but I guess they haven't had the consistency 
to put the pressure on Mercedes. And same too with Red Bull. Too many, too many failures, too many DNFs for them. Sergio Perez has been the most unlucky guy this season. Um, but today's spin, while leading, doesn't help. P8 for us and the constructors. Uh, I think it's P13 or so for me and the drivers. I am in a closely fought battle with Fernando Alonso. He did get a point or two today. Nothing for us. So it'll be a little bit more difficult to catch him in the driver's standings. But that'll be my goal for the rest of the season. I think the constructor's position, though, is, is pretty much locked in. Unless Alfa Romeo have a mad one and uh, get one, two or something. They, they, they scared me a little bit in this race. I'm not going to lie. Alfa Romeo were in P2 and P3 at one point. And we're looking likely to get a lot of points. But thankfully, uh, you know, the fast cars, the fast teams managed to sort themselves out and recover in that final stint. But uh, yeah, there we go, guys. That's been this Grand Prix for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. Absolutely mental race. The I'd probably say the craziest of the season. It was a complete roller coaster of emotions uh, and literal roller coaster of positions that we were in in this race. Unfortunately, no points today. But I have a feeling with the upwards trajectory that Marduk Motorsport is on, that regular points finishes are soon going to be on the horizon. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next race, not too sure what it is. I think it might be Australia. Wow, it's uh, it's going to be weird to race there, I tell you. But uh, home race for me, near the end of the season. Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it.